So you want to learn how to edit. There are some fundamental concepts that you need to get a grasp of first. These fundamentals can be used in any editing system, from Movie Maker to Premiere Pro and Final Cut. These fundamentals always apply. Today, in the fundamentals of editing, we're talking rhythm, pacing, and cuts. While I mainly do editing for video essays, which is a completely different rhythm than film, I'll also discuss film rhythm, pacing, cuts, etc. Here's problem number one. I can teach pacing. I can teach cuts and how to identify where the cut is optimal for a beat change. I cannot teach personal editing rhythm. That will take practice and time. If you can't figure out a rhythm at first, I'll do my best to explain mine. The way I use editing rhythm is in two ways. My video essay rhythm focuses on narration and the visuals and pacing and cuts that revolve around that. In terms of film, however, the rhythm is more of centered on the visual ideas being put forward. Video essays are documentarian and bring the visuals to the narrative to assist in the storytelling or the point being made with the added surrounding content. Film editing pulls the narration out of the juxtaposition of the cuts and the pacing. Film is built by the existing vision of the shots being pushed together to create meaning. Something better known in film theory as the Kuleshov effect. Dan Olson, Folding Ideas, has a great video on this link below. In short, for film, more meaning, he says, is created by the interaction of two shots than by any shot in isolation. To demonstrate this, he puts together a famous editing exercise. An actor sits and stares at the camera with a blank expression. This shot is then intercut with a number of other images, war footage, a hot meal, children playing, and so on. The perception on the part of the audience is that the face takes on the implications of reaction, the neutral expression looking sad or hungry or worried in turn following the war, food, and child. The meaning is created not from either the A shot or the B shot, it is created from the juxtaposition of the two. That's enough on film theory. You're probably here to learn how to do video essays or something for YouTube. With my understanding of documentary rhythm from earlier, that being centered around narrative created already, we can begin to piece together a video. What I'm going to be using is footage of myself, stock footage, and text and motion graphics to pace a section. Don't worry about what footage I'm using or how to make text effects or motion graphics. That's next time, when we'll talk about those. I usually source my stock footage from sites like Vidivo, Pexels, VidEasy, and some less than legitimate sources as well. I also, depending on the content of the video, may download a YouTube video to respond to, which I may clip convert. We're going to pace and cut in two ways, one with music and one without. When pacing and cutting with or without music, there are a few rules that you cut to an idea to another shot, or you cut away to an explanation, or you cut away in overlays or motion graphics. All of these examples were shown on the screen, just now. The relevance of the music is where you cut. With music and backing, you have two options on where to cut on a beat or musical motif change in the music, or you can cut when the narrative brings up ideas. Cutting on the beat is only good for cutting in a new motion background or other footage that could also be relative to the current idea in the narration, but not entirely. With or without music, the most frequent way you are going to pace is around narrative ideas. Say I were talking about puppies, as you see now, there's a puppy appearing on the screen, and I cut away when it's no longer relevant, but long enough that it could be seen. Let's go into Premiere and see more of this in detail. I'm going to use an example from an upcoming video that's unscripted that I did on liberalism and emotional labor. So we're going to talk about pacing and cuts here. And to exemplify that, I'm going to show just this beginning sample from uh, my intro to this video that I did unscripted. And so this is the intro. Uh, because I had a preview. You can see all there, it's very little. then it unblurs and it cuts, cuts right as the idea coming from my audio appears to the ground. So as you can see here, this blue background appears. And so I say there's a problem with that here. So I make that appear, make that appear there. And so after that, I have that appearing and then I fade it out because it's no longer relevant. And then as when I bring up the concept of emotional labor, I have that fly in and then I get rid of it later. And then I, when I say no here, I just put no. See this idea is I place, I place I objects when they're relevant. Um, so if you get that, you place it when they're relevant. And then at, when it seems like there's been, enough time to absorb the information, but not too long. 
you then cut away so that the information isn't just uh isn't just grossly uh overused or over overextended because imagine uh let's watch this but i'm going to extend this emotional labor shot see how long that was held on that was held on way too long that felt awful i'm gonna undo that see now it's very short so after i say i agree but i cut so think about it like this i changed the i changed the idea in the narrative cut uh so this is very simple to understand uh, I will also go into uh, another thing where I can talk about this more. Okay, now we're here looking at the cultural Marxism video from a while back, uh, and we're going to look at some cuts here. So, uh, uh, here we see the moment the, the, moment the needle dropped when my logo. So, just to like, make a clear. It's just this tiny thing, but the tiny thing can make a visual motif. So the drop of the needle, I drop my logo. And then I have all of them play. And cultural Marxism being used. I that fly in cultural Marxism and very quickly cut away. So cultural Marxism and fly away or cut away. And then I cut to this by set by centrists to cut to this footage. And I not Garrett, but but I'm a skeptic here. I keep centrists up uh, through the whole clip because it's relevant to what he's saying. And it's relevant to saying this is a Nazi conspiracy theory. Why is he saying this? And then I cut right before the video's over. And have that up for V. And then I put in, but then I cut right towards the end so that he can drop the R slur. And I can say, ooh, edgy. And Andrew Breitbart here, I just have him whining back and forth because I had to extend the clip, but I didn't want to actually go back further in the edit from what I had. So I just made him rewind back and forth. And then I cut to where he actually said this. And I play the relevant clip. I zoom and the moment he says it, I zoom in on him and drop the footage, drop the text on him. And I distort his audio just to make an extra effective focus on him. Focus on this. It's very important to pay attention. And then I cut away. See, this is very like basic. You see where the rhythm comes in. It's either on. The, it's mostly on the ideas. You get the idea. You get a new idea or a new beat or something expressive, like an expressive word. You cut. You make a cut. You get it. Okay. Thanks for watching. Uh, back to you, outro, Sonia. Thanks for watching. I hope to do more of these in the future as I progressively teach people how to know the rhythm of editing and more stuff like that as well for patrons of mine you can see my premiere tutorials which will be for patrons only